So as you may or may not know, I've been doing Shirinuri here on this channel for I think it's been over four years, since 2016. And this entire time I've been using the Creolon TV Paint Stick in 070, which is awesome. It's very full coverage, it's great for multiple looks, and it lasts for a long time, usually six months or so. However, the packaging is not very sustainable. It's made of a plastic tube, and once you're done with it, you have to basically throw it out. So here's what I did. I went out looking for some sustainable options online, and for the most part, I couldn't really find much. It's kind of like, not really many good options out there, but I did find two, and I'm gonna share the first one with you here today. This right here is a white face paint from LBCC Historical Apothecary, located in Wisconsin. Now this formula is actually inspired by several 18th century recipes, so for me, I think that's pretty cool. It costs $5 for half an ounce, and it only has three ingredients, titanium oxide, castor oil, and beeswax, so it's also fragrance-free as well. Here I'm swatching it onto my arm, and as you can see, it's very creamy and very emollient, and it really spreads across my arm very easily. It also comes in this very small tin, which you can reuse for anything else, like for storing small beads, for storing little knickknacks, or stuff like that, so it's good for repurposing after you're done using it. And for me, that's a big part of sustainability, looking for packaging that I can reuse in my own household. However, I'm pretty sure you're not here to hear all about this. You're probably wondering how this foundation performs. Well, let me show you it in this video. Hello, it's me. So I think the first thing I'm gonna do is apply it in little splotches all over my face, then take a blending sponge and blend it all out. And I do apologize, but I just got up, so feeling a bit rough. This is like really creamy by the way, and very thick. So, then taking this sponge, which is not damp by the way, it's dry, and I'm going to blend it all out. I have to say, first off, that the coverage is very similar to the Creolon TV Pasic in 070, which is awesome. Now I decided to dip my sponge into more of the white foundation and I'm going to apply some more onto my face. Oh yeah, this is way, way better. The coverage is super intense. I have to say that overall applying this foundation to my skin, I was very impressed. It's very creamy, it's very emollient, and it really spreads across my face very, very easily. And that's very important because I don't have young skin anymore. I'm, you know, I'm aging. And so, you know, I just can't apply any heavy foundation onto my face, you know. It has to, you know, really suit my face. It has to go over my my texture, my fine lines easily, and if it doesn't, it'll really show up. So that's very important to me. However, compared to my Creoline foundation, it's not quite as full coverage. You know, it's still pretty good for what it is, but you can see in spots like here and here, there's a little bit of my skin tone peeking through. And I feel like if you have a darker skin tone, that might be an issue. So the real question is, how does it take makeup like eyeshadow, eyeliner, and lipstick? Well, I'm going to do one of my Shirinier looks on this foundation and see how it applies. So the first thing I'm doing here is taking a light taupe shadow from a NYX palette. Usually with Creolon or Ben Nye foundations, when I apply an eyeshadow on top, I have no issues whatsoever. It sticks immediately to my eyes my eyelids that is, but um, for whatever reason, this um, foundation was not working with that. You can see especially in the outer corner of my right eye that the shadow is just not sticking to my eye and I was really perplexed by this. 
So here I am building up more color all around my cheekbones, wherever they are. And it seems like after you really initially work in the eyeshadow, it seems to stick a little bit better. I think that might be because there is less powder on top of my face. Now granted, whenever I do this with my Creoline foundation, I have a ton of powder on top of my face, but that's never an issue. But for whatever reason, it's an issue here. So perplexing. Now here's how it looks in studio lighting and I think it looks pretty decent, although the eyeshadow application was pretty horrible. And also here is me in natural lighting right by my window. From far away, the foundation looks pretty good. My skin looks very, um, very smooth. And if I zoom in up close, it looks fine too, but you can see the eyeshadow application here is pretty cruddy. <laughs> Now what I'm going to do here is do a wear test to see if it lasts, you know, for a certain amount of time or if it has any issues after wearing for a certain amount of time, if it goes into my fine lines, if it emphasizes my pores, if it just melts off. So I'm going to do a, I think a four or five hour wear test to see how it wears out. Now this is about four and a half hours later and as you can see the foundation still looks pretty good. If I zoom in really close you can't really see it like sinking into my fine lines or pores which is really awesome. Usually for a lot of white foundations after a certain amount of time it'll start to really seep into your pores and into your fine lines and it's really not a good look. It's also staying put pretty well like when I touch my face right here you can see that there is no transfer, which is awesome. Sometimes when you're wearing a foundation for a long time, it can get, you know, really oily and can just melt off your face and get really sticky. This was initially sticky. However, there was no transfer whatsoever. So that's a good thing. Now for some pros and cons about this foundation. I'll get into the pros first. Number one, it's buildable. As you saw in this demonstration, when I applied the foundation using my fingers and then blending it out, it led to a larger application of that foundation. However, when I went in with that blending sponge, it made the application much more opaque and thick. Number two, it's very creamy and easy to work with, which I find that to be a very big plus for me because I've worked with foundations before that are basically impossible to work with, like Ben Nye. Number three, it feels very light on the skin, which if you have sensory issues, you know, if you don't like the feeling of really heavy foundation, then I would definitely recommend this. Number four, and this is very important too, it doesn't sink into fine lines, which um, if you're somebody who has fine lines or wrinkles, that can be a big issue. I know for people who are much younger, that's not, but I'm not young anymore. And I need my foundation to stay very smooth and not sink into my fine lines because that does not look good. Even after four and a half hours of wear, it was still pretty opaque on my face with no creasing whatsoever. So that's awesome. Number five, it's very easy to remove. Usually some white foundations, when you try to remove it, it's like cement on your face. So not the greatest, but this foundation removed pretty fast with my face halo. And number six, it has no fragrance whatsoever. Now, if you have pretty sensitive skin, that can be a big issue for you. It's not so much for me, but if you're going to wear a foundation that long, you may want to seek a foundation that has no fragrance if your skin is very sensitive. Now for the cons. Number one is the cost. You pay $5 for roughly 0.5 ounces, which compared to other foundations is not the greatest deal. Number two, this is not as full coverage as Creolon, which if you have darker skin, I think this might be an issue for you because your actual skin tone might peek through and make your skin overall look kind of ashy and gray. So if you're looking for a truly full coverage foundation, then I would probably recommend you go with Creolon instead. However, if you have a large skin tone like me, it's probably passable, so no big deal. Number three, for whatever reason, blending eyeshadow on top of this foundation is, for whatever reason, really hard. I'm not sure what happened, but 
just trying to apply eyeshadow on top was like, it wouldn't stick to the foundation. So it was just sort of not having any opacity whatsoever. And I had to go over it over and over. And you can also see me trying to blend the eyeshadow down here. And I was really struggling to get a seamless blend. And for number four, whenever you try to set this foundation, for whatever reason, there were like weird dry patches of foundation all around my face. You couldn't really see it in the video, but you can see like a really weird patch right here where the, I think the um, face powder just stuck to it in a weird way. And for me, I like my foundation to be as smooth as possible. So that's a big negative for me. I'm not sure why that happened. So I have to say that overall, I'm really impressed with this foundation. You know, it's pretty full coverage, not the best, but it's good enough for me. And I find that it spreads onto my face in a very pleasant and a very smooth way, which if you're somebody who is of a older skin type or if you have like textured skin, this is a really big plus. However, I wouldn't recommend this for darker skin tones, so keep that in mind. Anyways, that is it for now. Let me know your thoughts down below, and I will see you in my next video. Bye!